president of the UN. In my view, the United Nations represents hope, a place where people from all over the world can come together and through dialogue work to resolve their differences and avoid war. I greatly respect the mission of this institution. Secondly, my thanks go to the permanent mission of Ireland, which reserved this room for us. You know, recently I learned something very interesting. Ireland has a secret power. It's the women in its delegation at the Ban Treaty. Back in March, I had the privilege to be here at the UN for a few days during those negotiations. I listened to the proceedings and I was very impressed by the exceptional presentations made by the women from the Irish delegation. Their arguments were clear, powerful, and persuasive, and they filled me with a sense of hope for the world and for the role that women are playing in it. I would like to thank Jenny Quinn from the delegation and Anne Kane from the Irish Mission, who worked with me to make this event happen tonight. I would also like to thank our non-governmental organization, NGO sponsors, the UN Committee of Religious NGOs, the NGO Committee on Disarmament, Peace, and Security, Pax Christi International, Mary Noel Office of Global Concerns, United Religions Initiative, and the Roundtable Association of Catholic Diocesan Social Action Directors. These groups got the ball rolling by embracing the film and supporting this screening. My deepest gratitude goes to the individuals in those NGOs. I have met some of you tonight, and I hope to meet those who could not be here so I may thank them personally. As you can imagine, there are logistics involved in making an event like this come together. It all happened in just a couple of days, and the woman who made it happen is Beth Begley, who is Pax Christi International's leader. <laughs> worked hour upon hour on this event, making sure of every last detail. Beth, I cannot thank you enough. My thanks also to Monica Willard of United Religions Initiative. She's an experienced planner of these types of gatherings, and she gave us valuable advice and counsel and guided us all the way to tonight. This is an independent film, and without our donors, it would not have been born. I would like to especially thank John and Margo Katsimatidis, who generously supported the film. Uh, John is here tonight with his daughter, Andrea, so thank you to the Katsimatidis family. On the West Coast, support came from Jack and Angela Connolly. As you saw in the film, Father Biggs is a beloved figure in Tacoma, Washington. And so Jack Connolly and Dennis Flanagan, both natives of Tacoma, came aboard as executive producers, and their assistance helped us get to the finish line. Stephen Eisenstadt, a father of young children, was also generous. Stephen could not be here tonight, but he sent me an email sending his regrets, adding, quote, I sincerely hope the film impacts lives the way it should, end quote. Then there's Cora and Peter Weiss, true pioneers in the peace movement. Their support was instrumental in making this film a reality. There were also many other donors who helped get us to this point. However, we have much more work to do. We would like to use the film to launch an audience engagement and education campaign in communities, and especially faith communities across the country, to help raise awareness on the issue of nuclear weapons. We are also planning to submit the film to film festivals, and if you would like to follow our progress, 
please jot down your name and email uh, on the clipboards that are, uh, that are up front. I think they're somewhere there. Now to the film. In the audience tonight, there are a number of my fellow journalists and documentary filmmakers. What we do is tell stories. The late Don Hewitt, creator and executive producer of 60 Minutes, had a mantra and it was, tell me a story. The story of the people in this film is one I felt deserved and needed to be told. Now that you've seen the film, however you may feel about nuclear weapons, whether you believe the world should or should not have them, I don't think there can be any question in your mind about the purity of purpose of the people in the film and the depth of their compassion for humanity. Are these people criminals or are they prophets trying to tell us all something? I think that's a question that only you can answer for yourself. I feel very fortunate to have had the opportunity to tell their story. I would like to acknowledge several of the individuals in the film who are here with us tonight. Sister Ardith Platty and Sister Carol Gilbert, would you please stand up for a moment? sisters were, were also convicted of sabotage for a plowshares action at a missile silo in Colorado in 2002, and they spent a combined 15 years in jails and prisons as a result of, these protest, of their protests against nuclear weapons and war. Getting to know Sister Ardith and Sister Carol and all of the people in this film was one of the highlights of this entire experience for me. They gave me access to their lives, and I will always treasure that. Speaking of treasures, a few words now about Sister Vegan Rice. I challenge you to keep up with this woman. At 87 years old, she is totally engaged in the world. If you're in her circle, you'll often get several emails a day from her about interesting articles you should read, or petitions you might sign. She's often out of, out of town traveling to one conference or retreat or another. She's just really unbelievable. And of course, she speaks her mind. For example, she has told me a number of times that she's not happy about the title of this film. Why draw attention to us, she has asked. It's not about us, it's about the issue. She has sent me a number of suggested different titles, and just yesterday, I received an email from her asking if it was too late to change the film title to, quote, from militarism to funding human needs, end quote. I think that says it all about her, and so I give you Sister Vegan Rice. 